Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News, and we have an update in the Bachelor Clayton hoax paternity scandal that has rocked the nation. And if you don't know about the story, well, giddy the F up. We're going to get into it all right now. What it comes down to is this, blatant lies, the judge denies. We've got a denial by Judge Matta over the petitioner's motion for extension of time to respond to respondent's motion to compel filed yesterday. Say that five times fast. I'm going to cover the story right now. It is fascinating. There's an all-out war breaking out on Twitter right now. Clayton, excuse me, Jane Doe's attorney uh, blocking people, I guess. Look, I get it. You shouldn't have been talking to these people in the first place. Follow me on Instagram, at Neils. You can talk to me there. Every morning and afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast. Yesterday, we covered this story in its entirety, a full 90-minute live stream, which was very quickly demonetized. That's how heavy these topics are. They say the video is being reviewed to determine whether it's suitable for most advertisers. But as we know, all 12,000 people that watched it, uh, you know, the revenue is not attached to that, which it's fine. But that just goes to show how wild this story is that YouTube and Google's like, whoa, get our ads away from this. We don't want anything to do with it. I'm going to get into it right now. Uh, Jane Doe's attorney is posting public updates and you know because what happens is you file a motion it shows them in the court the court will then redact aspects of it uh, as we know the judge had said that all medical information needs to be redacted before it gets public they screen these types of things well uh, Jane Doe's attorney say, we're just going to share it out there. I'm assuming it's with her permission because he works for her. Either way, he posted this. For those following this saga, I want to report all facts. And by the way, I mean, look, the dude's got 600 followers. So like, why is he even doing this? He doesn't have a following. He doesn't have some giant audience that's demanding to know what's going on. Now, the audience is out there, but it makes you wonder, is he just trying to get his slice of the pie and boost his numbers? It's very strange. No one knows the intention behind sharing this publicly first he said be patient everybody and then he just shared the um the full motion on his own Uh, maybe he's proud of his work i like to share my work when i'm proud of it uh but again it's whether or not jane doe wants this and if she didn't she probably would have fired him by now but hey he's still there he said for those following this saga i want to report all facts whether good or bad the court just denied the motion i filed yesterday this is not good for Jane Doe, Uh, but it is not case ending. Litigation is a marathon, not a sprint, and it is never over until it's over. This will continue. Now, look, I'm not calling this lawyer a blowhard. I think most lawyers are blowhards. I think it's a very, I don't know, uh, grandiose uh, type of law, type of profession to get into. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, I I stand on on stage and try try to tell people what I think is funny. It's very self-centered. Of course, I understand. Takes one to know one, right, folks? Well, well, here's what the the court uh, said. Good afternoon. Judge Mata has denied petitioner's motion for extension of time to respond to respondent's motion to compel filed yesterday. She is currently requesting a proposed order from Mr. Woodnick on his motion to compel. I don't really know what that means, um, but uh, they said, thank you, Judge Mata's division. So this is the assistant to the judge emailing directly both Jane Doe's lawyer and Clayton's lawyer. Uh, th- th- this bombshell that was dropped yesterday, uh, that was tweeted by uh, Jane Doe's lawyer, was insane. 39 pages uh, comparing Clayton to Trump uh, in Trump's defamation lawsuit. I can't even use so many of the words that were in here. Of course, uh, claiming that Jane Doe testified that Clayton R. warned her. You know, very, very, very tough to even discuss these things um, in these sort of uh, in terms that uh, work within this platform. Uh, but now we've got Megan Fox, uh, writer, Megan Fox, YouTuber, uh, battling David Gingras, the lawyer for Jane Doe, to the point, I guess, where she's now blocked. So David posted this in 13 years on Twitter, I've blocked maybe three people max, all psychos. Today, I've blocked about 50 plus people. Sheesh. Is it the upcoming eclipse or something? I've never seen so many crazy people coming out of the woodwork in my life. Be nice to me. I'll be nice back. Um, And again, he has uh, weaponized or been a part of Jane Doe's weaponization of the Me Too movement and uh, and really, um, you know, accused Clayton of something that will probably 
uh, be attached to him for life, that being that he is the actual aggressor here and not the victim. Uh, he said, hang on, several people posted shame on you for posting someone's name. I have no clue who they're talking about. Now you are saying you want nothing confidential? Okay, which is it? All confidential or nothing? Again, Jane Doe asked for confidentiality and Clayton said no. Okay, let's break this down. He doesn't know what's going on here. There was a 39-page motion, and in that motion, there was an email response from Greg Woodnick that included vict- one a, a new victim, a victim that did not want to be mentioned, a victim who so much so didn't want to be mentioned that had his lawyer email people that were probing with a cease and desist to say, stop looking into this. But this is somebody who came up in the deposition that Jane Doe had where she said this was the first man she was pregnant with. She offered this up in her deposition. Uh, uh, Greg Woodnick, Clayton's lawyer, has, uh, I guess, redacted that guy's information out of respect for a victim not wanting to come forward and call it ignorance um, or, you know, whatever you want to call it. But David Gingras, Gingras didn't know that that was in the exhibit here. So Megan Fox, good friend of the program, puts it all together. Why doesn't Jane Doe's lawyer know what's in his own exhibits? That's bizarre. He published an email from Greg Woodnick to him with Matt's name in it, and he claims he has no knowledge of what he published. Interesting. Someone said, no, you ding dong. You put the name of Jane Doe's earlier victims. Since she's done this multiple times in your filing, who didn't want that part of his life publicized? That person is not Clayton Eckerd because David Ginger said, there are no names in my filing other than the parties. Maybe you're talking about an exhibit. I have no idea. My client asked the court for a protective order to limit disclosure of information. Clayton opposes. If you disagree with that, tell Clayton to change his position. All right, so we're arguing different things here. So if I could mediate real quickly. Clayton wanted it published because he knew he was being railroaded. He knew that the only way to solve all of this is for the public to see the manipulation that was going on. Jane Doe wanted it private because she didn't want people to link the fact that she has done this multiple times to other men, put him in dating contracts, try to hold uh, and weaponize that she was pregnant over him. She is so far over her head right now. She is swimming so far in the deep end of the pool here and she has no way out and now her her last and final claim during the deposition is that he forcibly you know did you know what uh, Megan says, okay, I'll help him out, the lawyer. He's struggling here. We love Megan. She's, he's struggling here. He didn't read his own emails or something. Matt did not want to be named. His attorney threatened me when I contacted him. Matt is a victim of this one's client. Jane Doe's lawyer would know that if he researched his case. And, and before he claims that it's Greg's email that named Matt, you all should know that Greg meticulously redacted Matt's name from the last filing from the deposition and his emails. It wasn't confirmed until Matt until Jane Doe's lawyer published it with no thought for protecting the victim. We all uh, protected him as long as we could. We will believe Matt, and hopefully he will feel strong enough to come out now and tell the world what Jane Doe did to him too. It's time to end this nightmare. Now, we understand that Matt's a victim, and I didn't out him. No one come after me. I didn't out him. We understand he's a victim here. But at the same time, we also understand because it's hard for victims to come out, uh, people will continue to abuse systems the way they do. So because none of these people had the clout or publicity behind them like a bachelor and no one was getting their story told, she was able to do this again, 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 and again. Uh, Jane, uh, Megan Fox says it's time to end this nightmare circus. And by the way, I'm going to also play in this video uh, a little bit of the previous testimony that Jane Doe made where she claims uh, she was under the services of certain uh, medical providers. A claim that her current lawyer clearly didn't watch these old YouTube videos is now arguing against. So Megan says, and since her lawyer so rudely blocked me for answering a question he put out on Twitter publicly. Here's his question that I kindly answered for him. Why block the person who gave you the answer? Weird. Um, <clears throat> someone said, why is he revealing what is said between him and his client? He included emails between him and the opponent's lawyer that revealed the name of... So a lot of people are questioning, why the hell is he doing this? 
Um, <clears throat> so then Meg says, where do I start? Jane Doe asked for a protective order so that all of her dirty dealings would be sealed from the public. The fact that it was denied is immaterial because the judge specifically said no medical records should be released, which this guy did today. And redactions could and should be made where appropriate. This guy didn't even wait for the court clerk to redact anything, nor did he wait for Greg to tell him, hey, maybe don't release my full email, but he wants to yell and scream at us for pointing out what he did wrong. Yes, what's so bizarre is that this lawyer said, hey, patience is a virtue. Just be patient out there, folks. And then everyone was like, okay, we'll be patient. We've been dealing with this for 10 months. We'll be patient. And instead, he's the one who leaks it all. I say leak because yes, the court system was going through what they wanted to redact uh, you know, publicly. Here's where it gets crazy. Oh, that wasn't the crazy part. Jane Doe's new lawyer is going with Clayton Eckerd, R-worded her. Do you think he's seen this email his client sent to Clayton after the alleged R word begging him to do, uh, you know, have sex with her because she's so tight? Is he sure about this defense? So again, this is from the deposition. We covered this yesterday. People are absolutely in shock over this deposition. Um, what had happened was Jane Doe said, I told my sister that Clayton had, I guess, you know, stuck it in when I told him not to. And then Woodnick said, wait a minute, you are claiming that you told your sister that you told Clayton not to put his, you know what, inside you, but he did. And she said, yes. And then the question was, are you suggesting that Clayton R worded you? And she said, that's technically a definition. Now, while it is technically a definition, she also made this same claim to Clayton, me, and Reality Steve. She included Reality Steve and myself in that claim, and we never posted it because she had yet to say this publicly. Publicly, she didn't want to make this claim because it is such a volatile claim to make if it's not true. Privately, she was willing to make this claim because you know she wanted to do anything to, to, to be the victim here. Uh, so then Woodnick says, but your testimony right now today is that Clayton had done that with you against your will. And she said, he stuck it in when I told him not to. And then what's interesting in Megan Fox shared this, which we've seen already, seems weird to beg him for more. Um, and again, this is the email she sent. I come home tomorrow afternoon. So if you want us to consider an abortion, this really is our last chance because of timing and the fact that neither of us would want to end the pregnancy once there is a heartbeat. Um, uh, da, 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 da. She, she goes on to say stuff like, I trust and respect your decision. Um, and she, she mentions, I can't see it in here that, um, you know, the best thing you could do is hook up with me since I'm already pregnant. That was kind of like her old game plan. Having sex with me is a privilege and not something I've done for a long time. Um, however, it occurred to me that you might believe me more about paternity if you were inside of me and felt how tight I would be, um, after not having sex for more than a year, maybe then you'd believe I haven't been sleeping around. And again, you wouldn't be doing me any big favor. Um, so it's very fascinating, these private emails that were sent after she alleges that he did that to her. Um, so the uh, so, uh, someone said, oh, my Lord. And Megan said, the Lord wants nothing to do with this. Um, wild stuff. So the judge denies the motion. Denies the motion. Um, her lawyer's defense was that Clayton is like Donald Trump here in that um, he's going full, like, um, I guess, Darvo mode is what it's called, um, to save respondents. So um, here, uh, what, mis what is happening here is something entirely different. Mr. Eckert is taking a page directly from the Donald Trump handbook on how famous men should respond to these claims. Deny everything, smear the accuser as a lunatic and a liar, claim they made the whole story up, and hope no one believes her. The only difference here is that she's done this in the past and multiple men have shared very similar stories um, and there's really been no evidence whatsoever as far as I've seen that proves she was ever pregnant in the first place. It's almost like she doesn't even want to argue whether or not she was pregnant. She just has these semantic arguments about like, well, I did test positive once. Um, so then it goes on and on. Here's the craziest part and we're going to respond to this with uh, some clips from uh, her trial that she had. Um, uh, in the injunction against harassment. Uh, Clayton Eckerd's no records found theme is misleading for another reason, one which he conven conveniently fails to mention. During her recent deposition on March 1st, Miss Jane Doe was asked numerous 
questions about the names of doctors and facilities where she sought care, some of which are the same places that later said they had no uh, records uh, related to Miss Jane Doe. In her deposition, Miss Jane Doe gave a clear, cogent explanation for this discrepancy. She made appointments with several doctors, but then canceled the appointments for utterly innocuous reasons. She had COVID. In the course of complying with her disclosure obligations, Miss Jane Doe provided the names of doctors whom she sought care from, but no care records exist for that doctor simply because Miss Jane Doe never actually received care from that person. This evidence proves nothing meaningful beyond the fact that, like many people, Miss Jane Doe has anxiety and trepidation about seeking medical care, particularly for an unintended pregnancy. Due to illness, she was unable to keep every medical appointment she made. So to think that she has anxiety and trepidation about seeking medical care, but didn't have anxiety or trepidation about going public with her claims that she did to the Sun, the Post, uh, you know, uh, all these other places she tried to get them to share the story, no one else did. Either way, it takes us to this injunction against harassment hearing. I always have to remind you guys, this hearing took place with this attorney because you all donated to Clayton Eckerd's legal fund. This is Deander from Woodnick Law. She's absolutely fantastic. A recent mom, so knows very much about the anatomy of giving birth. Here's a few moments where she cross-examines Jane Doe, and then now we see a complete, like, there's no way Jane Doe's lawyer watched all of this to know that Jane Doe said all these things on the record, which completely, uh, you know, refutes his claims that she sought the treatment but never received it. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And so based on that, Ms. Owens, before I proceed with my line of questioning, do you have any prior testimony that you'd like to correct at this time? I do not. Her lawyer's like, you gulp. I want to make sure that you're clear-headed. And obviously, uh, it's your position that you are pregnant with alleged twins, correct? A hundred percent, yes, correct. She's very clear-headed. She's drinking Monster Energy Drink, which has been proven to heighten brainwaves. And also fry your baby. You can't be, you can't be drinking that. What medications are you currently on? Objection, Your Honor. Relevant. And that's an, that's an inappropriate question for this. Um, I'm on prescribed prenatals and I'm on folic acid. It's not medicine. I mean, it's it's over the counter, I guess. And I also, I'm sorry, I also take Lamotrigine for epilepsy. Is there anything else? Is that your entire list of medications? That's my entire list because I was taken off of anything else that I was on when I found out that I was pregnant. And have you been diagnosed with any other medical or mental health issues? Objection, uh, Your Honor. I don't think that that's going into her mental health, going into her physical health, mental health. I don't think that's appropriate uh, for this type of hearing. It's not appropriate. That doesn't have a question. Her mental health uh, is depression? appropriate for this hearing. Okay. And any other physical health diagnoses? Epilepsy? And who, who provided those diagnoses? All right, I think we're now over the report of that testimony. Yeah, Understood, Your Honor. I'll now, this on. is for the injunction against harassment. So, what, this, you know, obviously what's what's happening here is uh, Clayton's lawyer, Deandra of Woodenick Law, is trying to establish who her providers are. Meanwhile, during this still frame, you can see she's chugging a monster energy drink. Come on, please. And how far along are you as we sit here today with respect to the pregnancy? I am 24 weeks along. This was two weeks ago. This was November 2nd, 2024. What she now claims as of January is that she found out in November that she miscarried in September or October. So she's not pregnant, although she never was. And when was your last menstrual period in order to calculate your due date? Uh, objection, Your Honor. I, I don't think that that's appropriate at this time. It, it seems like these questions are meant to harass my client. She's indicated she's pregnant. She's indicated it's been about a month. You don't need to know things about her menstrual period. Actually, we do, you idiot. I, I'm going to sustain the objection. Yeah, menstrual period has a lot to do with a pregnancy. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can you please uh, provide us with the your alleged due date? 
Uh, February 14th. Valentine's Day. Cupid's twins. And you testify that there's absolutely no possibility at all that your alleged twins are anyone other than Clayton, correct? There's no chance they're anybody else's. But you understand that Clayton has been very clear from day one that he did not have sexual intercourse with you, right? Um, Clayton was not. If you look at the June 4th message, he... And these are yes or no questions. Do you understand that Clayton was very clear from day one that it's his position he did not have sexual intercourse with you? Then the answer is no. All right, so it goes back and forth. And then at 4554... We have the moment where she, you know, you know, gives gives her medical providers. Clear, I guess, is what you're trying to ask me. Who is your OBGYN? So the question is, who is your OBGYN? Not who did you seek, you know, as your OBGYN? Dr. McCool. All right, so she says Dr. McCool is her OBGYN. So the claims being made here in this motion that she sought care from these doctors but never received it, you know, that might apply to one or two, but she's now claiming these are her o- this is her OBGYN. She's not claiming she sought treatment and didn't receive it. It was a very clear question from Deandra. Who is your OBGYN? Dr. H- Dr. Higley? Yeah, I wasn't able to, to hear that, and I'm not sure if the... I'll withdraw the objection now. Can you please repeat that, Ms. Owens? Who, who is your OBGYN? My main OBGYN is the perinatologist, Dr. McCool. And when is the last time... Oh, well, you said your main OBGYN. Who else are you seeing? What other pregnancy-related doctors are you seeing? Dr. Higley, who I saw last Friday. Who are you seeing? She saw him last Friday. She lied? And, and an epilepsy doctor as well. Ford, he specializes in pregnancy. Okay. And in your, in your exhibit, I believe it was 44, you indicated... Actually, let me go back here. I'm going to stop there, guys. Call the fight. It's over. Are you kidding me? Look... I have a business degree from a state school. I'm a goddamn moron. And with these three fingers, I just Googled a couple things to show she's absolutely full of shit. And this lawyer yeah, is arguing that she sought treatment but didn't receive it. I'm sorry. Blatant lies, judge denies. I'll be live to talk about this further on Patreon at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I've got Megan Fox joining me if you want to hear what she has to say. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. We'll see you then.